Hey, what is up, mortals? It is, here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 5 season 2 of What If Izuku Had a Villain Quirk. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So, we begin. All around Izuku was a miasma of his green gas. He heard muffled voices echoing around him. They grew louder and louder until he woke up. The day's jungle-haired teen glanced around the room, noticing a worried Momo and a slightly guilty-looking Todoroki. Oh thank goodness you're okay Midoriya. I was worried about you after that fight the female seemed to have weight pulled from her shoulder. She turned to their heterochromatic friend who bowed his head a little. I'm sorry about our fight Midoriya. I don't know what got into me. I just... I heard you saying these horrible things. You were mocking me, and it made me see red. He runs a hand through his hair in my rage I even broke the promise I made to not use my father's quirk. The look on the Viridian-eyed boy's face soured a little. He gave an intense stare at Shoto before stating that he was glad the promise was broken. The son of Endeavor was shocked at the statement, mustering up the mental coherence to utter a simple why. I've been trying to get you to realize that your fire is exactly that. Yours. The boy face palmed as he slumped in his bed it is not your father's quirk and not using it only hampers down on your potential. Wouldn't it be more satisfying to fight, tooth and nail, to the top, and declare that your father had nothing to do with you getting that far? You can use the fire you think is his to push your status farther than he's ever gone and stick it to him then. The strategy Izuku came up with actually made sense to Todoroki. It wouldn't be the worst idea to torture his dad with such a thing. To ensure that he could never claim the glory of being the one who got him to the spot of the number one pro hero. After all, who would listen to Endeavor over the new top hero? You don't understand how lucky you are Todoroki. Tears accumulated in the corners of his emerald eyes you have two quirks and people praise you for both of them. I never had that experience with mine. The two students next to him exchanged a silent look. The male sighs as he resigns himself to his fate. He admits that the plan their juniper-haired friend had come up with was slightly superior one to his. I will take the path you suggest. You and Momo both seem insistent on your plan and I have no reason to mistrust either of you Midoriya's jaw dropped at how easily he managed to change Shoto's mind. Overwhelmed with emotion, he bursts into tears of joy, shocking Yamomo and confusing Todoroki. He quickly dismisses the panic the tall girl felt as he revealed a bright smile. After being cleared by Recovery Girl, the trio went back to watch the last match before the semi-finals started. They were able to catch the tail end of Bakugou and Kirishima's match, with the Ashen Blonde coming out as the victor. The stage was now set for the next ladder. The two members of their group who were eliminated waved as their third member made his way down to fight Ida, who had won his match against Ibarra. Izuku absent-mindedly cheered for the heterochromatic teen, his mind elsewhere. He was focused on trying to find out what happened during that match. All that he could gather was that him feeling a new emotion while using his quirk affected it. Perhaps it was something with hormones that work in tandem with emotions. The boy was snapped out of his dreamlike state at the sounds of even louder cheers. Tenya had been defeated by Todoroki. The Viridian teen, honestly, couldn't fault him at all for the loss. From what he had watched, the legacy of the Ingenium Agency had fought his hardest, disadvantaged by the fact the son of Endeavor was now freely using his flames. A fact that brought a smug smirk to the face of the number two pro hero. The trio reunited once more as they watched Bakugou mercilessly pursue Takoyami, eventually forcing the boy to forfeit once he discovered the weakness of Dark Shadow. The explosive adolescent turned his eyes towards Todoroki in a silent challenge. He was met with a mostly blank stare, with just the barest hints of determination within them. The final stage of the UA Sport Festival was said to be an incredible battle. After a brief intermission, Shoto left Izuku and Momo to get ready for his fight. The two waved eagerly after him promising to cheer him on. Present Mike eagerly announced the two remaining competitors, before declaring the match to start. Instantly, the dual-colored team let out a giant, glacial attack at Bakugou. In retaliation, the blonde burrowed through it with his explosions, bursting through and attempting to grab the icy teen. He grabbed hold of his head, only to flinch and curse as his left side burst into flames. Endeavor watched in a sickening glee as he cackled madly, seeing his creation use his fire. The explosive student pushed through and attempted to toss him out of bounds, only for the boy to catch himself with a wall of ice. The rash opponent launched himself into the air, preparing for a giant attack to end the match as quickly as possible. He raced towards Todoroki with an insane grin on his face as he demanded that he had better use his fire. The heterochromatic male hesitated for a moment as his flames on his side dimmed slightly, before he remembered what Midoriya told him earlier. If he wanted that satisfaction of seeing his father in ruins like he so desperately wished, he would have to give 100%. He let out a sea of flames toward Katsuki as he detonated a colossal explosion that rocked the stadium. Smoke filled the concrete battle area where they fought. As it cleared, an unconscious dual quirked boy was revealed facing a badly burnt, but standing, explosion quirk student. Bakugou Katsuki had won the UA Sports Festival. 
The two were quickly tended to by Recovery Girl as Midnight began organizing the rest of students for the award ceremony. The school medic returned with the first and second place winners of the festival, both of them going to their respective places on the podium. A smug smile was displayed on the face of the ashen blonde boy and a contemplative one was on the male on the second place platform. Midnight announced the presence of All Might to give the awards as the towering figure jumped down from his perch atop the rim of the stadium. He was presented with the medals to give to the students. He praised Takoyami and offered the boy a hug, a rather awkward-looking thing considering the man's rather large form. It was then that he moved on to Shoto, commenting on his fierceness in battle and how he finally utilized his flames. I guess I finally saw how not using my left side affected me. I always thought that I would lose myself and who I was when I used it. But Midoriya taught me something the jungle-haired boy glanced up at his name being mentioned it is a part of me, it is my quirk. I can choose what I want to do with it and no one can say otherwise. No one. The last words were uttered as dual-colored eyes found turquoise ones surrounded in flame. The mono-colored eyes seemed to glint with something, as if recording something to ponder about later. All Might either didn't notice or ignored this as he handed the medal over to the son of Endeavor, giving him a hug as well. At last, he had arrived at the blonde who occupied the first place position. He congratulated the teen in completing the promise he made at the beginning of the sports festival. Surprisingly, the student was rather tame in accepting his reward, only commenting about how he never broke a promise. With all the awards passed out, the number one hero called for everyone to cry out one last time for all of the hard work the students gave. He was criticized for thanking them as they all instead said plus ultra. The sun was setting as the hero course class of Wana returned to their homeroom. Aizawa let the students know they had a two-day break to recuperate after the sports festival. The jungle-haired teen noticed the absence of one of his classmates, finding it odd Ida was not there. The students went back to their homes, excited to return to school after their break and receive information about their internships. Izuku returned to a giant hug from his mother who was still crying. She had cooked his favorite meal for him after he did so well in the festival. That night, the Viridian teen went to bed with a full belly and a smile on his face. For the next two days, Izuku let his body relax as he contemplated what happened at the sports festival. He called Midnight to talk with her about it, the woman suggesting they try and test a few things with it after his internship. She asked him to keep the sudden new side of his quirk on the down low until they could discover what all it could do. On the last day, he bolted to UA, eagerly awaiting to see if he got any internship offers from hero agencies. He did his best to keep himself from getting wet, eventually running into Tenya. The strict adolescent insisted for the jungle-haired boy to hurry as every UA student should always arrive early, seeing the male so upbeat after. What had apparently happened to his brother was a little disturbing. He attempted to question the blue-haired teen only to receive a cheery smile. The teen didn't buy the smile for a second. Upon entering the classroom, he was greeted by the sound of conversation echoing around him as everyone was chatting. The male sat in his usual spot next to Momo and Shoto, shooting them both a bright smile as he conversed with them. Midoriya attempted to cheer up his female friend, who still looked a bit down from the festival. Their teacher quickly quieted them down as he began explaining the internships. He displayed the amount of internships offered on the board, Todoroki and Bakugu both getting an absurd amount of them. After hearing some of them complain about not getting any internships, he told them they would all be interning anyway so they could study the daily life of pro heroes out on the field. Sato excitedly chimed in, stating they would need hero names for that. The racer had conceded that point, stating to take naming themselves seriously, despite them, most likely, being temporary. The door slammed open as a female voice interrupted 1A's teacher, agreeing with his sentence. Midnight walked in, stating how these hero names could end up being their code names for life. Izuku tried to keep a serious face and not show how sick he felt as he watched some of his classmates perv on the hero who was like an older sister to him now. The Erasure Quirk hero explained that their names should reflect them in the best of ways and tell the world about the hero they wanted to be in the future. The students received boards to write down their hero names. After a few moments, Midnight asked if any of them were willing to share their names, giving the room a general feeling of anxiety. A few students came up and gave their names. Suyu's receiving nothing but positive praise from the R18 hero in her class. Midoriya thought deeply about what his hero name should be, recalling the ridiculous hero names he came up with as a kid. He knew that his name should revolve around his quirk, but have a positive connotation. He thought of all the possible synonyms of hallucination and began crossing off several options in his head. As cool as it would probably sound to name himself Nightmare, or something of the like, the name combined with his quirk would probably make people think he was a villain. The green-haired teen had to come up with a positive or neutral-sounding name, one that wasn't assuredly associated with fear. More and more students got their names approved, Bakugus instantly being rejected on the grounds of how violent it sounded. At last, Izuku went up to the podium and set his board in front of his class. I, I want my hero name to be Mirage, the hallucination hero. 
Momo was the first to applaud his hero name, giving him a bit of relief from the thoughtful silence the class had gone into. His old hero tutor gave him a pat on the shoulder and a reassuring smile as he went to sit back down. Katsuki attempted one more time to give a hero name. This one equally as bad. Mimari sighed as she commented on it being basically the same thing as his first name she rejected. The woman facepalmed at the explosive blonde. Well, at least the rest of one a picked decent code names, she thought to herself silently including Izuku. I'm proud that he came up with such a delightful name. She smiled to herself as she went to wake Aizawa up, happy for her protege. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in the story thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes deep into the facts and lore of a wide variety of anime. It's sure to expand your weeb knowledge for all kinds of series guaranteed. On top of that, we have a third channel called We the Celestials Naruto What Ifs. It's what we do on this channel already but in the vast world and lore of Naruto. Go check it out if you're in the mood for some jutsu action. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, then I would like to extend out an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being we only accept members 16 years and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. Our discord is an all-around fantastic place to be. Rather you're a fan or looking to join our band of misfits, we're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So, thank you all for watching, and have a great day.